Hey everybody, how you doing? Teching and Barry here. Before I get into the video, I have a very special announcement. It is that time of year again, and if you're watching this video when it first went up on December 17th, yeah, the days are kind of a mess for me recently, a lot of stuff going on, but this Saturday on December 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be holding my annual charity live stream. Uh, we're once again doing it for St. Jude Children's Hospital. Last year we raised just barely over $8,000. It was the most successful charity stream I'd ever done so hopefully we'll have another good one this year uh, got videos from other youtubers we're gonna be showing those last year we did some tier lists we played some you know trivia games just a lot of fun so come on over it'll be once again December 19th 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time all this stuff's in the description so hope to see you there and and Barry will be hanging out there too Barry's really kind of the cornerstone of all this but uh, I guess I'll be there too okay so uh, with that all being said today's video is about spiders <laughs> <laughs> so many spiders. I have so many spider pictures to show you today. I was going to give you guys a warning like, hey guys, if you're maybe arachnophobic or just kind of like, you know, creeped out by spiders, you know, maybe this isn't the greatest video for you to watch. But then I also thought, you know, spiders. All right. And they're not all going to be this horrifying, but, um, you know, I'll throw a cute one in here. Here's Lucas. Lucas the spider. We all like Lucas the spider, right? He's awesome. You should go check out Lucas the spider. Okay. So, um, Last chapter, we got the big revelation that Black Marie is Devil Fruit. She has the Ancient Zone, uh, the Spider Spider Fruit model, Rosa Magalia. There's another word that's attached to the end of that, like Gravigelli or whatever, but I think I'll just say Rosa Magalia from now on. It's an ancient tarantula, right? So I thought this would be a perfect time to also talk about spider fruits in general, because up until this point, it was pretty much like already established that Onigumo, uh, one of the vice admirals of the Marines, he has the power of a spider spider fruit. Spiders, of course, are not insects nor mammals, so that kind of leads on a whole other section of devil fruits, the arachnids, right? So, uh, yeah, now, now, Onigumo, the vice admiral, he was never mentioned to have a spider fruit, okay? But his ability allows him to create a bunch of hairy legs on his back that he's able to, like, grab his swords and use. And he has six of those legs, and then he has his own arms, and so that kind of leads to believe that he has eight. And also the fact that Onigumo's name literally translates to demon spider. I'm gonna assume that he has the power of the spider spider fruit, like a, just a regular model spider spider fruit model to tarantula or something because they kind of look like they're hairy spider legs so probably some type of a tarantula right some kind of mygalomorph spider okay so yeah Onigumo I want to talk about him a little bit then we'll talk about Black Maria's Rosa Magalia and how that's a little bit different and then I want to talk about just spider fruits in general right and just in terms of planning this video like as I'm like you know gathering all these spider images I keep thinking of more references to make involving spiders because spiders are freaking everywhere I mean in fiction they're pretty much everywhere like there's a lot of video games and movies and books and stuff that have spiders in them. But also, spiders are literally everywhere. As you're watching this right now, you think you're alone? No, there's a spider somewhere in your room watching this video along with you. I have one right here. Oh, that's a spider butt. Sorry, I have one right here. <laughs> yes, so uh, just everyone just kind of like, oh, okay. Also, there's that old saying, I'm not really sure where it began or really what you want to call it, but that old saying that um, you're going to eat spiders when you're asleep. When, when you're asleep, spiders just crawl in your mouth and you eat them, which is probably... Actually, I don't know if that's true or not, so that might be happening, who knows? But, and just to go down the list really quick, as I wanted to make a bunch of references here, we got, uh, the Phantom Troop from Hunter x Hunter, of course, and Karapika's hatred for them, and therefore his hatred for spiders. So, if you ever were going to Australia or something where there's, like, huge spiders about, just bring, uh, Karapika with you, because he knows immediately where all the spiders are, and he'll, like, kill them immediately. Uh, we got, uh, Aragog from the Harry Potter franchise. Had to bring up Aragog. Oh, man, I, you know what? I hear a lot of people... Like, their arachnophobia might have started with that movie, you know, that are, like, my age, and they watched Chamber of Secrets when they were kids, and they saw Aragog come out of his hollow, and yeah, that was, yeah, I've always really dug spiders. Wasps! Wasps are the things that terrify me in the night, but, um, yeah, spiders are always cool. Uh, Spider-Man, of course. Um, when I think of Spider-Man, of course, actually, I, before even any of the movies, before I think of those, I think of the two video games on the PlayStation 1, uh, the original, and then Enter Electro, whenever I think of Spider-Man, because those were my jam growing up. 
Arachne from Soul Eater, the witch Arachne. Remember her? Okay. Rachnera from Monster Musume. I mentioned her in the last video, but yeah. So yeah, if you have any other uh, spider-themed uh, references you want to drop, go ahead in the description. Okay. So let's first talk about Onigumo, all right, as just a vice admiral, all right? Because there's actually a few interesting things with Onigumo. Um, first thing, you can probably assume that he was taught by uh, Akainu in terms of the idea of absolute justice, because Onigumo definitely embodies that 100%. He's always the guy that wears the armor, and he's always smoking a cigarette, and he's got the spider legs coming out of him. And uh, yeah, you don't want to talk back to that commanding officer. I mean, there's some Marines that are a little bit more chill than the others that kind of just like listen to their subordinates a little more. Yeah, Onigumo is not one of those people. Onigumo is a vice admiral. He was one of the vice admirals that got sent to Eni's lobby to initiate the buster call. And uh, one of his men, because the order was changed to like, hey, we have to target one of the other buster call ships. And, you know, one of his, uh, you know, the one of the seamen recruits or whatever on the ship were like, hey, vice admiral Onigumo, are you sure we should be doing that? I mean, that seems kind of... And then Onigumo, before he can even finish the sentence, he just takes out a pistol and just shoots the damn Marine right then and there. He's just like, nope, those were our orders. We're here to stop pirates. They gave us the order to stop the pirates. Uh, we're literally bombing our own judicial island right now. So if they give the order to target another Buster Call ship, we'll bomb whatever because we're here. We're Marines. We're the absolute justice Marines, right? That's the kind of guy Onigumo is. He might even be a little bit more hardcore with this than Akainu when you really think about it because damn, uh, maybe not exactly because when you think of what Akainu did at Ohara, you know, same basic idea there. But yeah, they, they definitely fall in line there. And there was also a really cool scene uh, during Marine Ford. There was a few scenes with Onigumo there. Uh, he was actually the one that a attached the um, Sea Prism cuffs to Marco. Remember, there was that one scene where for a little bit part of the battle, Marco had the Sea Prism cuffs and he couldn't transform into a phoenix. Onigumo was the one that kind of grabbed him with his mighty spider legs. By the way, here's another one. And uh, grabbed him and then held him down and then, you know, attached the, uh, the Sea Prism cuffs so he couldn't use his uh, zone powers anymore, okay? So that was cool. I mean, just the fact that he has a bunch of spider legs coming out of him, that's pretty neat there. We've never seen him in his full spider form, and it's interesting that his hybrid form takes that that form of, like, just the legs coming out. That's something else we'll get to Black Maria in a second, because all the other hybrid forms, like, of zones seem to be, like, you know, your physical body changes to be a hybrid. So, in theory, Onigumo, when he goes into his hybrid form, he should look like this. Oh, God! I think this is from Demon Slayer, but oh god. But yeah, yeah, it should be something like this. Like, that should be his hybrid form. Getting, like, the fangs and the freaking eyes. Onigumo's name, uh, it's like Oni Spider or Demon Spider, because, you know, uh, Gumo or Kumo just means spider in Japanese. Also means cloud. You know, Kumo can mean cloud or spider. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, um, it, you know, it's also an orb weaver species. It could also be a reference to. So I guess that's the kind of spider he might be referencing there, but it's, like, hairy, so you think, like, a terrain but but at any rate yeah that should be what he looks like you know with the eyes and the fangs and then plus the spider legs coming out of him but that doesn't seem to be the case it's just like a little tuft of hair on his back and then spider legs coming out from all sides and then he can use those to grab swords and that's how he fights right now you know we'll get to black maria in a second because her appearance when she goes into her hybrid form or maybe her full form is also a little weird right but anyway there was a scene also at marine ford i think was added in the anime where onigumo takes his mighty spider legs and he kind of raises like, you know, eight swords at once with all of his arms. And he's just like, we are the Marines. We fight for absolute victory. Trying to like rally all of the Marines together. Like, you know, even though we have Whitebeard and them on the ropes and Ace is dead. I think it was after like Ace is dead and everything. Onigumo was one of the Marines that was advocating for like absolute justice, absolute victory. We are not going to declare victory until all of those pirates that attack us are dead. All right, that was that was his it was his goal the whole way. Same thing with Akainu, kind of the same idea, same logic behind absolute justice. Kind of drives people insane, honestly, because you know at this point a lot of the Marines are also dead, and he's trying to rally them together. Like you know, okay, even though we've lost a quite a bit of our numbers, and we might already be winning, we we cannot declare victory unless it's absolute. So he rallied a lot of Marines together. Like yeah, spite. I mean, you're not gonna argue with the spider guy. All right, imagine you're in the Marines. Marines and your commanding officer, your your commanding officer happens to be part spider, you know, and you know that he has the power to just turn into a giant spider like from eight-legged freaks and just ah! 
and just bite your head off. Um, yeah, you're probably just going to roll with that guy. That Marine at the Buster Call, he had some balls, let me tell you. He was on, maybe he was a new recruit. Maybe he just didn't know the system. He was like first week on the job as a Marine and he's under uh, Onigumo's fleet and he's like, all right, I just joined the Marines. Man, this should be fun. And then all of a sudden you just hear like, all right, Buster Call. Oh man, first week on the job and it's a buster call. That's not good. And then you get sent to Annie's lobby. He's like, hey sir, do you think we should be shelling our own ship? Boom! And he just gets shot. So yeah. And I also think maybe the whole spider thing, maybe that's like kind of like, okay, he's a very no-nonsense, very serious kind of uh, uh, vice admiral, absolute justice. And maybe like the idea of the spider aesthetic also like terrifies other marines to kind of like, oh, okay, we'll go along with him because he just has a very terrifying zone ability, right? Okay. So, that's Onigumo, now Black Maria, and the interesting thing about her, and I brought it up in the review, is that when she goes into her uh, hybrid form, uh, it doesn't, once again, it doesn't, like, change her physical appearance, like her actual body, other than, like, her, her lower half. Her lower half transforms into the spider that has its own eyes, its own mouth, the legs and everything, but the upper half is still, like, human. Or, I mean, she's kind of giant as well, but, you know, her eyes, her mouth, her, like, that stuff doesn't change, okay? And so, a lot of people would think, well, that's because she's supposed to represent a uh, Jorogumo. A Jorogumo is a Japanese yokai. It's a spider woman demon. Uh, it's This happens a lot, not just in Japanese mythology, but in a lot of mythology in general, where demons or ghosts or whatever will take the appearance of a beautiful young woman to leave men to lead men into their doom all right and the joro gumo is like that you know you, sh you think she's just a beautiful woman out in the middle of nowhere in the woods or whatever and then you know she turns into a giant spider and eats your face or wraps you up in silk you know all that kind of stuff all that kind of jazz right and so the joro gumo uh traditionally are depicted the way that black maria was depicted in the chapter with a spider body like where her legs should be and then up upwards you know it's a human uh female Okay, so that's basically the idea for uh, the Jorogumo and for Black Maria. Also, that's probably where the design for, like, Rachnera came from, from Monster Musume, right? That's the same basic design there. Okay. Now, that's all well and good in terms of, like, yokai and what the references was and everything, but still doesn't make a lot of sense when it comes to the way that hybrid zones usually work. So that's got, actually, a lot of people thinking of interesting ways that this could be spun, no pun intended, because of spider silk. There's uh, my favorite, or people think that Black Maria Maria's body, at least her body that we saw in the last chapter, like her human body, wasn't really there. It was basically taking thread or the spider silk and wrapping it together to make it look like a woman, and in actuality she was maybe in her full spider form at that point, and then just using the thread to make it look like it was a spider, uh, make it look like it was her on top of it, if that makes any sense. So it was basically like a lure, like an illusion, kind of like Grand Fisher from Bleach, you know, uh, where Grand F uh, Fisher is this giant hollow with the mask, but also has the lore that can make it look like a young girl to like lure people like, oh, there's a girl about to die and lure them down and then he attacks, right? So that might have been something like that. Last chapter, we got to see her in her full spider form, Rosa Megalia, and just using the threads to make it look like she's there and uh, just like, you know, toying with Sanji basically. And this gets a little bit more believability when you think of the way that Rosa Megalia would have hunted. It's the uh, ancestor to the Megalomorph and like the trapdoor spiders where they would basically burrow underground and then cover their uh, den with like webbing or whatever and make the trapdoor and then like a cricket or something will get close to them and then it will jump out and eat them and then pull it down into the hole underneath and into its burrow okay and so that's what black maria did with sanji luring him into her lair and then she might still be like you know toying with him like that right and uh once again though it, it, it might even be a thing though honestly that spider fruits just might be operating differently Keep Keep in mind, I mean, most of the zones that we see in One Piece are mammals, right? Or there, we've seen a lot of birds out there. Uh, we've seen a few insect zones, you know, with the Mushi Mushi Nomi, with the Hornet and the Rhinoceros Beetle that the Tontadas have used. Um, but so far in the story, when it comes to the spider spider fruit, which is arachnids, a little bit something different, out
outside of Smiles, of course, uh, we only have Onigumo and we have Black Maria. And keep in mind Arachnids as well. That can also include, you know, uh, Mites and Ticks and uh, Scorpions. Uh, it's the Arrhenii Infra Order that's actually true spiders that we actually think of as spiders. Arachnids in general can be a bunch of different things. Uh, and we've seen, like, uh, Daifugo, who has, the like, the Scorpion smile, but we're not talking about smiles there. So it might just be the case that spider zones, like regular spider zones, whether or not it's, like, a regular tarantula or an ancient zone, Rosa Megalia, or whatever, might just operate a little bit differently than the other zones do okay where it's like you think that it would be like you know spider human hybrid like this is what onigumo should look like but no it just operates differently where onigumo just has the spider legs and his hybrid and then if he wanted to he could turn into a giant spider like from freaking uh uh you know eight-legged freaks or earth versus the spider that's probably the first movie i ever remember watching that involved a giant spider and it was like this really bad 1950s b movie i remember i woke up one day ready to go to school i was probably Probably like an elementary school and there's this old black and white movie on tv early in the hours of the morning it was called earth versus the spider and um yeah it's not the best but I, it had a giant spider in it and i remember watching that and like that was probably my first experience of like giant spider fiction right so maybe onigumo could do that or maybe Onigumo's full spider form will, would take the form of a giant tarantula, but Onigumo's body is still on the top of it or something. Like, spider fruits operate differently from all the other types of zones just because it's a, it's a different, like, um... A different class you know that's how just how it works there so yeah um either way let's talk about some stuff that they could do now so far we've only seen black maria using the webs to trap people so obviously that makes sense we've yet to see onigumo do that but i'm assuming he could he could do everything that a spider can basically uh but on top of being able to spin webs and having a bunch of legs what else can spiders do well venom they, they have Venom, they have the ability to inject their enemies with Venom, and the Venom that I understand will basically render you immobile, or, how does that work? Because it, the way that spider, this is terrifying, by the way, I'm gonna get into, like, like explicit detail of how spiders devour their prey in a second, or at least as much as I can recall, um, so if you really are, like, arachnophobic at this point, I don't even know why you're still watching this, but, you know, basically... The way I understand is that spiders, you know, they, they just have their fangs, right? They don't have teeth or like a lower jaw, which is why when you saw Rosa Megalia, Black Maria, it's weird that that spider did have teeth and a tongue and everything like that. It's a little weird. Um, but at any rate, they can't chew their food. So don't they, they, they drink you, right? So do they inject the venom just to like paralyze their uh, prey? And then do they just inject more venom to like, you know, turn your insides into a slushy? Or do they have something else like their saliva is the thing? Or do they just like bite you and then just suck out all your fluids? They don't even have to inject you with anything else. It's just inject with venom, paralyzed, and they just bite you and then they just drink you like they just stuck a straw inside of you and just... And then that's just, that's just how they do it. So either way, regardless of how they do it exactly, that is terrifying. And like Onigumo probably couldn't do that when he's in his hybrid form. But if Onigumo went into his full form and Black Maria, that's the thing. The Rosa Megalia we saw did not have fangs. It just had regular teeth. So I'm not really sure. And a jaw. And I'm not sure how that's going to work, right? Um, maybe Oda didn't want to go so, so crazy with that. Oda's drawing these giant spiders and he's like... Well, the way spiders usually eat people is these two giant fangs and and then but this is a shonen manga. I'm not going to go that freaking insane with it. So, yeah, this spider, it has a lower jaw. It's got rows of teeth. It's got a tongue. It's like human. It's it's fine. It could still bite you, but it's not going to do the whole, you know, sipping you through a straw thing. Like, you know, that's that's a step too far, even for Oda, right? But the thing is, even without that, you could still have the venom aspect of it, right? Like, you could still have the spider, you know, Onigumo, you know, somehow figure out a way to inject venom into the enemy to, like, paralyze them. That's something you could still maybe keep. Um, I have a book here, and uh, this isn't the same one I had when I was a kid, but this is probably my, like, one of the first things I remember that really got me interested in, uh, like, you know, studying insects and arachnids and, like, spiders and stuff, because I've always been fascinated by them. This is, uh, Do Tarantulas Have Teeth? I used to read this all the time when I was in elementary school. They had, like, a whole series, and it's just a book series for kids teaching them about, like, different animals, and, like, there was one I remember that was all about, like, marine life, okay and so I always, I always remember this though i always remember the terrifying giant tarantula 
fangs bared, a little bit of venom even seeping down there, about to devour this poor hapless lizard. And that lizard looks so damn happy. Look at it. Just like, oh boy, I really hope there's not a giant spider behind me about to freaking suck out my fluid. You know? Oh god. So... Oh, man, no, this is a good one. This is scorpions hiding in cowboys' boots. So if you're ever out in the middle of the desert and you're taking off your boots, make sure to <laughs> be careful when you put them on the next day. So this was about scorpions. This is a fun one about ants. Um, oh, there's also ants that can... Um, I know this is more of less a video, more just about spider facts than, like, you know, Onigumo and Black Marie at this point. But there's actually uh, spiders that can mimic ants. Ant mimicry in the uh, animal kingdom is actually pretty common because ants a lot of times are like unpalatable to certain like animals and stuff. So that's like, like oh, we're going to pretend to be an ant. And a lot of times you'll actually have like right here, this is actually a spider, not an ant. And you'll actually have spiders... Um, you know, pretend to walk on like six legs and use the two legs out in front to make it look like the ant's antennae. So it makes it look like an ant when in reality it's a spider with eight legs, not six. Um, so yeah, there's some stuff about bees in here. But what I wanted to know about is something involving spiders. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're just like that poor, poor little cricket. Okay. So... Let's see. Do tarantulas chew their food? No, tarantulas cannot chew. They can only drink or suck up liquids. When a tarantula bites its prey, the poison starts to digest the victim. It's, uh, it turns the flesh into a kind of mush, then the tarantula sucks it up. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's scary. But there's also another fact I wanted to know about. Yeah, right here, right here. Do tarantulas have any other weapons? Yes, the tarantula also carries a Glock inside. Of, you know, if you think the spider wasn't scary enough, it also has a sidearm. It's also ready to fight you. Yes, tarantula hairs are poisonous too. When in danger, the tarantula raises its rear legs and brushes a cloud of hairs off its body. Beware the hairs. If they land on your skin, they can cause a rash, and inhaling them can make breathing difficult. So, and then there's also, that's about tarantulas, but there's also a handy little picture of a black widow here. Um, so... That's something maybe Onigumo could do with his legs. He could create, like, a bunch of spider legs, and he can, like, rub them together and make, like, this hair come off, and then anybody that inhales the cloud of, like, tarantula lay, uh, hair will just, like, make them, like, you know, choke or whatever. So that's another idea. But, um, yeah, I bought this book for this video specifically because uh, I was going to probably do a video on Onigumo at some point, and then Black Maria revealed her devil fruit, and I figured, okay, perfect opportunity for this, right? So, yeah, yeah, do tarantulas have teeth? That's... That's my childhood right there, and there's a whole book series. All right. Well, anyway, uh, I hope you all learned about stuff involving spiders today and different ways that they could be used in uh, horrifying combat in One Piece. Uh, we'll look to see how Rosa Megalia, the ancient zone that uh, Black Maria has, how that's going to go up against Sanji, and if anyone else is going to help him out, like if Robin or Brooke are going to show up and help out Sanji, that would be lovely to see how that would go. And uh, who knows, maybe at the end of Wano, maybe Onigumo might show up on one of the Marine ships, if the Marines end up going to Wano. And then we'll get to maybe see a little bit more about him, and maybe some other kind of unique devil fruits out there, you know, ones that um, are different from the kind of like just the mammals and stuff we've seen so far. I would love to see some more insect ones. I would love to see some more ones like the arachnid, you know, like things like that. It'd be pretty cool. Maybe there could be a, uh, I don't know, a, a flea zone. A zone that turns you into a flea and gives you like crazy jumping power or something like that. It's possible. So yeah, I'm sure Oda's gonna take a lot of liberties with this, like how the, you know, Rosa Megalia appeared uh, in the uh, manga, but I'm sure he'll probably make them rather terrifying as well. So we'll see. Thanks for watching, everybody. And here you go. One more spider picture for the road. Bam! I said I wasn't going to show you a scary one at the end. Except I am. There you go. Uh, and also, make sure to check out the, uh, the charity stream this Saturday, December 19th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Teching, Barry, Giant Skeletal Spider, signing out.